Hey yo, what's good? This is the Band King, King Kamari, and you're listening to Three Count Podcast. You want to talk wrestling with some real cool guys? Give them an ear. Check them out. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Chaz Evans, and you are listening to the Three Count Podcast presents. Now entering the ring. Let's go down the roster. Introducing first, he's my tag team partner. He's the second in command. He's the man that run the show because I don't do shit. I don't run shit. I just talk shit. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the Red Dog, Cliff Miller. Oh, yeah. Red Dog's catchphrase. That's it. And introducing second, he is your 38-time world heavyweight national African-American racist killing coronavirus surviving. Oh, my God, he smacked your mama because the chicken tastes like crap. He booked himself to go over. That's why he's a 36-time world champion. He is the man. He is Chris Idol. Always happy to be here. <laughs> and last but certainly not the least, he is my little brother, and that is the only reason he's on this show. He barely watches any type of wrestling. He only watches Ollie Davis and Wrestle Talk. Ladies and gentlemen, sometimes you know him as Josh. You may know him as the Napster, but we call him JJ. Uh, um, first of all, I'd like to thank the sidewalks for keeping me off the street. Uh, There's some dangerous times going on. Um, We're having a whole revolutionary war again, I guess. Maybe the part two, the sequel, or the trilogy. You never know, know, but make sure you guys are locked and loaded. Chitty, chitty, bang. Murder everything. And uh, all the people that are listening, um, you guys are awesome. Amazing people. (laughs) Stay safe. And... Ladies and gentlemen, you know this is the Three Count Podcast now entering the ring, which means we have a very special guest here in the hot seat. We got close friend of the show. We got Tyler Moore here on the podcast. What's going on, man? Hi. I feel like I, I feel like I heard that on a previous episode. I don't know. Maybe it was uh, Chaz's birthday episode with my daughter, who was just like, "Hi." In <laughs> fact, she did do that yesterday. She did. She said, oh. Hi. oh man. So, bro, let me tell you how this goes. We all got three questions for you. Um, I'll start. Cliff will go after me. Then Chris Idol. Then JJ will uh, follow us at the end. And then we have the ten count questions. So. 10 count questions is 10 questions. First thing that pops to your mind, knowing you, that's probably a terrible idea. But hey. As long as y'all know. <laughs> <laughs> if, for the listeners that don't know, that is a terrible idea. But hey, it could be funny as hell. So let's get right down to business. First question. I ask everybody this. How the fuck did you get into wrestling? Actually, Justin. <laughs> um, one day I was walking around Woodlawn. And there were a group of kids just beating up on each other. (laughs) (laughs) Like, a lot of people don't know that, but, like, a lot of of our people, like, they always talk about old school wrestling. I know nothing of it. When I came in, John Cena and Randy Orton were feuding, and I thought that was the greatest thing in the world. (laughs) That's where where, where it starts with me. And I want you to know, like, it starts with me there, and then I left wrestling. I was like, I don't really care about this. I have no idea who AJ Lee is. I'm nerdy. <laughs> but I have no idea who AJ Lee is. Like, that whole thing is blank, and I just randomly came back. I don't know how the New Day formed. Like, I just watch it. And also, like, a lot of things, like, there's a lot of things. I'm, I'm one of those guys that barely watches it. Like, I've, I've never seen our Ring of Honor. But I've met the Briscoes numerous times. I had no idea who they were. <laughs> that's that's funny. That's that. Oh man! And I feel like you've told me this before, and now hearing it, and now I'm starting to remember. Like you've told me this before, and I remember, like, oh my god, I yeah. remember this. Cliff has seen yeah. me multiple times. Like I'll go, I'll think of like a cool move, and somebody will go, oh yeah, somebody in New Japan does that, and I'm like, 
Damn, I thought it was original. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. So, but yeah, that's, it's just, that's funny how, you know, at this point, Justin, out of like probably what, five people now we've interviewed, we asked, how did you get into wrestling? Well, it's all because of Justin. Yeah. Honestly. Like, really, <laughs> Justin low key is like the birth of like this new wave of uh, wrestlers and that no one knows about it yet. But Cliff doesn't know about that. So Cliff, I just want you to imagine a bunch of high school kids just beating up on each other. And I just go, this is fun. Cliff did this for a full year last year. <laughs> oh, it was a lot nicer when you did it, Cliff. Oh, okay, good. See? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know. Did Cliff ever meet Mr. Hammer? No. No. No, he, no, he has not met Mr. Hammer. No. Nope. Cliff, about that off air. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so, um, next question is, you've had a lot of matches so far in your career. Mm -hmm. uh, what's one match that's... Uh, not your favorite, but a match that you're really proud of. Proud of. Uh, it would probably be proud of. Damn. There's a lot of matches I don't record that are there, but it'd probably be um, the C3W match. It was me, it was Black Privilege, me and Greg versus Capital Vice. It was the third team. It was a third team in there. Oh, versus Space Force. It's uh, Mikey and Desmond. And that was when I realized that, that was a fun match, not only because I got to, we did whatever we wanted to do. Um, that was my first match also wrestling injured, getting an injury mid-show. Mm. So at the start of the match, we do a whole spot, and Brandon um, of Capital Vice, he was supposed to leapfrog me over, and he just headbutted me straight to the groin. And within the first 30 seconds of the match, had a fractured pelvis. Oh, damn. Damn. <laughs> and, the entire, and the entire match, like, all of my spots were me taking stuff to the stomach. So it sucked. I remember after that show. But also, that was one of the favorite shows because it was um, it was C3's biggest show because they had it at, like, a basketball center. And it was sold out. They had lights. It was great. We came out. I knew people knew of us, but that was when I realized people know us. Because they came out, I think, we came out last. At first, we wanted to come out second, because we was like, let's just let whoever's winning come out last. And they were like, nah, you're Black Perfect. You got to go out last. And I'm like, nobody knows who we are. We've only, you've only done two shows. Nobody knows us. And we came out there, and we had the cheers. And I was like, oh. We took photos. That was a great day. But probably that. And then... Like, the whole structure of the match was great. Everything else went great besides that one spot, but you can't tell. And then, that was cool. That was probably my, like, favorite match so far. Awesome, awesome. So, my last question would be is, we know you're part of the team Black Privilege, you and Greg, or I'm sorry, Samuel Masters. So, my question to you is, what do you prefer? you prefer being a, a tag guy or singles? Honestly? It depends. <laughs> There's, because one thing I've learned in wrestling, it depends. There's so many variables. It depends on who I'm working, the venue, and what does the promoter want from me. Mm -hmm. Because if if the promoter doesn't want that much for me, then I'll just go do a tag match and we'll just do our simple stuff. But if he, there are certain promoters that'd be like, go for the wall, and I'm like, let me be by myself on this. Because the thing about the Black Privilege tag team is. Greg is the powerhouse. I fly. Right. And it just works. But there are certain times where it's like, but those, our tag scenarios are where like, we don't have to do as much because the other is doing the other half. It also depends on my mood on basically who I'm working. Cause there are some people in this business who just don't have common sense. <sighs> you would be <laughs> surprised. There's some people you tell to lock up, and they are going to Irish with you. <laughs> Live. Live. I believe that, though. That's the crazy thing. That's crazy as it sounds. I believe that. <laughs> Damn. That's wild. I've had my experiences. Trust me. <laughs> oh, no. We believe you. Because we've, 
we've heard other stories from other people yeah. who have said yeah. <laughs> some wild ass stories too. Well, there's one funny story I could tell. I think to think of to Cliff this one where um I gave a dude a brain buster, which we all know the move of brain buster. Mm -hmm. Yes, and I hear him afterwards. I pin him, and I go, "You all right?" And he goes, "I think I fractured my ankle." <laughs> I did. And I go, it's funny. I look at him. I go, "Say that one more time for me," because I didn't hear that right. <laughs> and you got it's still the same brain buster, the same jumping one, the same dangerous one. And I'm like, "Your leg of all things." He goes, "Yeah, man, it feels funny." And I go, "You know what, kid? We're gonna call it right here." <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna call this here. Wow. So I've heard. I, I, trust me, I've heard crazy stuff. That's funny. Was this the one where you're telling me like he went up and like he figure fought his leg or something like that as he was coming down? Oh no, that was another one. That was fight where um <laughs> yeah. he messed up his own. He messed up his own move. <sighs> yeah. That's another thing. People will tell. They people want to do stuff like there's. I can't tell you how many times since. I'm a springboard guy. They want to learn something. They go, oh, I want to try doing a 450. And I'm like, learn to jump first. Do not start with a 450. Because if a 450 goes wrong, it's your neck. Right. Yeah, I think my favorite story that you were talking about was the guy who said he could take the, was it a Spike Rana or the Kalisa Rana? And he just, he kept fucking it up. Oh, no, I remember what it was. I told him, um. So there's a thing that we test everybody. At this point, we're vets. We just uh, It's just that. <laughs> we have common sense and we're vets. So me and Greg do a test. Greg has a specific arm drag, and Cliff does it now. <laughs> if you cannot do that arm drag, you're going to get a basic master. You're not getting anything special. Mm -hmm. It's a simple thing, but most wrestlers can't do it. If you can at least like get the concept down, we'll go somewhere with it. But if you can't do it, and one dude, he... I think we got to the building at 12 o'clock, and I told Greg, I don't trust these guys. They're way too excited about this match, and we're not even, we're like, match three. You shouldn't be this excited. <laughs> and I go, Greg, go, go see if he knows your arm drag. And from 12 to 4 o'clock, he was trying to figure out how to do this simple arm drag. And Cliff, I want you to know, nonstop, he was trying it. Full motion. And I'm like, oh, it's going to be one of those days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so yeah that was something that like you know if we're talking about it like it was something that was told to me and i i learned it from uh michaels right I mean, so yeah media taught me it okay. but he taught me it so quick that i learned it and i forgot it and then um ron asked me about it and i was like i don't know what you're talking about but not thinking about it, right? Like, mm -hmm. we start doing it, and I just went into it, and he was just like, you know how to do this already. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> like I was like, my memory. Weirdly muscle memory. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of moves where people go, I don't think I can, you've seen me before go, I don't think I can do this, and my body just does it. I'm like, I didn't know I could do that. <laughs> I've, I've seen that, actually. <laughs> like, a lot of you people look, don't know, even that springboard moonsault, I hate being upside down backwards. <laughs> I remember you used to say that all the time. Uh huh. And then when you, and I, and I seen you, you started doing you started doing the spring bro moves, and I'm like, bro, Tyrone don't like to go upside down. I remember he nope, specifically I said it years ago. To this day. <laughs> no, that's funny. I just was like, I was like, you know what? Forget it. I only got one chance. Let's just do it. And I was like, you know what? Like, we'll just we'll just fear every match. <laughs> so. One of my things, right, with all the matches that you've had, what's been your favorite fan interaction? Oh, man, I've had so many. I love all of our fans. Um, I'm trying to think favorite. Uh, probably C3 again. We had, it was like five, like, little girls. And I think it was me and Greg versus, I think, um, Ellsworth and um, Ruckus from CZW, and we came out, we were like their heroes. I've never heard children scream so loud. <laughs> Mind you, um, oh, my bad, I think uh, Ruckus was doing a promo, and I can't even hear, like, he's probably five feet from me, and all I hear is, punch him, Tyler. And I'm like, I don't know what you're saying. But, <laughs> and they screamed for about a good 40 minutes. Damn. Straight. And I'm just like, wow. We are role models. 
Oh, that and the one time this isn't like a favorite. This is a more shocking moment. Because um I think we did a show, it's called Cold Red in PA. Where I think we wrestled uh Jeremy Grimes and then uh Acton. And we had won the match and I I celebrate. And I turn around and Greg is holding somebody's child. <laughs> In the ring, like I just got up and Greg has somebody's child on their shoulder. And I go, Greg, that's not yours. He goes, like, don't worry, this kid remembers us. And I was like, Greg, this is my first time here. He remembers you. <laughs> <laughs> and he just kind of, it was, it was funny because I've never seen a kid get in the ring, but he smiled. He was so happy. He cried. Hey, oh, that's awesome. <laughs> Kids love us, and I don't know why. So, besides kids loving you, where's been your favorite place to wrestle? Woodlawn High School. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, remember Warzone? Remember I filmed the last episode, Justin? Ah, we. Oh, the episode uh, of Grass? Remember that. <laughs> Cliff, you know, there was one time when they said they were having the, sh- the last time they said they were having the show. I was the only one that showed yeah. up, so I recorded grass for like twenty minutes. Oh, oh no, it was it was great. He, it was great. Didn't you edit it too? Like you put the intro in it, and there's the grass. It was great. Just straight grass. But um, wait, what was the question again? <laughs> <laughs> Your favorite place to wrestle. Oh. Probably two places will be, um, damn, Greg would kill me because he loves this place. I'll just say the other one is C3 just because that's the only place where I see a lot of, like, uh, c- people of color there. And it's a different environment at the locker room, very friendly. And the other place is, um, it's not Evolve. It's something with an E. I think it's, it might be. I think it is Evolve. They just, it's not the Evolve you're thinking of. It's another place called Evolve. But they have... It's fun wrestling in there because it's a big place. They have a nice ring. It's soft. And they have six fog machines and laser lights for days. Nice. Fun fact, you only need one uh, fog machine. At six, you can literally lose your path to the ring. <laughs> which, which I think the show we did... Three people got lost in the ring. They ran into the ring post for their entrance. Oh, no. (laughs) It was great. (laughs) So, everybody asked about, like, your favorite match. Everybody's asked about – there's other questions I'll get asked. I want to know about what was the worst part of your debut? Huh. I had to wrestle Eric. (laughs) So my debut is probably the worst debut in history. It was in North Carolina at this place that they just didn't give a damn. So my match with Eric was supposed to be a um, a lumberjack match with females at ringside. And it was the loser of the match has to kiss all their feet. And mind you, the guy who was doing my music when I got there, Broke my flash drive. I don't know how. He was he just like he was like it broke off in my laptop. I was like, oh, no. It it was literally like one of those cheap ones. It only had my music on it, so it's not like I lost anything. I was like, whatever, that happens. Then yeah. we So I said whatever. He he didn't even get the music, so I ended up coming out to some random DMX song. It wasn't even like <laughs> one of his famous ones, it was just a random one. <laughs> <laughs> but then we get out there and me and him are both standing in the ring. And mind you, we had already seen all the girls. It was like 12 of them, 12 strippers. Just straight 12 strippers, all in flip-flops. And we get out there, and only one comes out. And we go, what the hell? We go, whatever, we'll just we'll just play through it. We had a spot with like some of the girls where they would like slap me because I was supposed to, I was this mean dickhead. Early in the night, also, I established that I was mean by getting, um, that was the first, the first show was a 21-up show, which, you know, I get to say whatever I want. So I think I had called some old man. I pushed his wheelchair and wheeled him around and called him a cunt. It was like, I just did a whole bunch of wild stuff. <laughs> but then um, I called, I think I, 
I think I called like one dude was eating a br- chicken breast, and I just kept calling him fat and telling him to eat it faster. It was <laughs> great. <laughs> but the spot ended with like I guess the the guy who runs it, the GM, he came out and was hitting me with a purple dildo. And that was the end of the spot. Now, the fun fact about this story is because they they had it like when you got there, they needed some guy to, and I quote, take dick, eat shit. That was the name of the spot. So at first, I was like, you know what, it's a dildo. I was like, cool, whatever. I go, whatever girl's using it. Don't care, just as long as she keeps it clean. And then I hear, right before I'm about to go out there, oh, no, that's Tim's. Oh, no. (laughs) He goes, yeah. He was like, oh, does Tim use it on his wife? Sometimes. (laughs) Not on me. So if you watch, there's probably a clip somewhere on the internet of a bunch of people recording it. He goes to pull it out, and I do the, you know, the big turnaround, ah. But I like matrix dodge it, and then I just do a random backflip. It looks probably horrible on camera. But I was like, ah, the camera, that touched me. (laughs) <laughs> that was a free story of like how I said that I'm a mean guy so we do the match and by the way the match ended early because Eric, I'll say it straight up Eric's one of those guys where Eric did a power bomb and he's a bigger dude and he put all his weight on me for oh. a power bomb knocked the wind out of him so I tell him call it right there so I said whatever just call it I'll, I'll, I'll kiss it. he was supposed to kiss me but I was like whatever I'll kiss it I don't I just, just want to go home <laughs> so we do it and then as soon as I get pinned I noticed the one girl that was out there is gone so I go, whatever. I'll just go to the back, I guess. And then we go to the back, and there are cops and dogs everywhere. <laughs> so, and yeah, they were they were just everywhere. And then I go, oh, what's happening? I don't like this. And they were telling everybody, like, leave your gear bag. The dog is going to search you. And they had got, like, noise complaints. Mind you, I was like, who did a noise complaint? Because you know how a lot of wrestling spots are just in the middle of nowhere. So I was like, who did this? It's not a church. They should expect this. But then we get there back then, there's dogs. This one dude had a cobra. Like, not a cobra, but like a python or something. And he was, like, long. It was taller than me when it stood up. Because I remember, uh, that was my told. I think I told Clifton that Nick is scared of snakes. And he will kill you if you bring one out. Yeah. <laughs> But because I remember Nick was already gone, he was in the car because the snake was out. But I remember getting back there, it was just cops everywhere. And I was like, what's going on? And they was like, oh, somebody had a noise complaint. And then I learned that they were giving away alcohol and didn't have a liquor license. And the cops were doing all that and a whole bunch of other stuff. And I was like, huh, I don't think I'm coming back here. Well, I was about to say, yeah. Yep, nope. Not, that'll be the last time I'll be that there. I was to North Carolina, so you can imagine how long that drive was. Yikes. That's crazy. <laughs> I. Hey, that is exactly the place I would expect you to wrestle. Uh, knowing you for almost 10 years, that is exactly where I would expect you to wrestle. <laughs> well, I have a lot more fun wrestling in, like, PA. I don't know what it is. Just PA fans are different. PA fans are loud. And, like, they just say how they feel. Sometimes they love you. Sometimes they hate you. One dude yelled at me just because I had on yellow. He just hated me because I had on yellow. Nothing else. He was like, oh, that was cool. But I hate the yellow you're wearing. And I was like, it's like, <laughs> I was like, I've never heard this before, but thanks, I think. <laughs> <laughs> uh, great. All right. All right, man. My first question for you. What's the hardest you've ever been hit inside the ring? Jesus Christ. Um, probably by Mason. Um, you sat me down and it was it was a miscommunication, but Jesus Christ. I hear he sat me down and he said, turn your head. And I didn't hear him. I thought he said, don't turn your head. So he comes this way in and he just hits me all boot. Straight. Knocks me almost clean out. And I'm like, oh. After the first one, he did it again. But after that, I was like, he meant move your face like as it connected with me. And I was like, I almost went out. Yeah. <laughs> It was that one, and then I told you the time where I fractured my pelvis. Yeah. The fracture of the pelvis, the only reason that hurt afterwards. It literally felt like my testicles were inside me. Oof. And I was like, I don't... At first, I didn't know what it was. I thought it was like, did the sack bust? Like, is this it? <laughs> I didn't know what it was. I just knew something down here was all in pain. Hey. 
Oh my god, that's got to be. And I think it, I run enough. I heal very quickly, so it only took like a few weeks to heal. That was the only good part. That's not bad. That's not bad. Okay, usually I ask next, what's the worst match you've ever had? But I feel like you've got like twenty five different ones. <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> is there one that's just like so bad that you just try to block it out of your memory? Yes, yes, there's a few of them. What was the one, dude? I think this was. I don't remember where we were. I ain't never going back there. <laughs> it was somewhere in PA, but we get there and we're the we're the new people introduce us we go we talk to our guys they tell us what we're doing they tell us first of all it was weird because it was one of those small places but they had a pre-show and i thought we were going to be in the pre-show but they put us mid-main i was like we're new here what are you doing it was like he was like oh we've seen some of your stuff and we want to we want you to do that here and i go cool who's our opponents and these guys they go by dick d-i-c three white guys who dress in pink and love when the fans call them dick that, that was what they told me their character was and I was just like alright you guys want to go over the match and they go nah we'll just call it when we get out there now I have been around and I've known long enough not everybody can work on the fly right they could not work on the fly and they called it so we get out there they, they just want to work on the fly I remember it was me and Greg and I just go they mess up. Oh, this is the fun part about it. After we get told, I, I told the promoter, I said, can these guys work on the fly? And he looked at me, he said, I'm sorry. And then he gave me the, he gave me the signal. He goes, but if they get out of line, do what you got to do. And I said, how many steel chairs you got underneath the ring? He said, six. I said, put one more down there just in case. Because they had went to, they was about to get all seven steel chairs. <laughs> <laughs> but um, we start the matchup. They mess up the opening spot, which was very simple. You turn your, it was three, they were a three man group. All three of turn y'all back. We're going to jump you from behind. For some reason, for their entrance, after we came out second, they decide to stare at us eye to eye. And I'm like, we're outnumbered. Why would we jump you? So we say, forget that. We scrapped it. Then he said, I almost killed him live because he decided, I'm, I'm, um, I had my knee on his neck on his like stomach area. And he decided to take it upon himself while he's being choked to try to stick his finger in my ass, which I proceeded to apply real pressure to his neck <laughs> for five seconds. I forgot where I, I kind of went like, whoop. I was like, oh, you want to play? And I let him <laughs> can't do this here, can't do this here. <laughs> and then I think he messed up Greg's arm drag and Greg got pissed. And Greg, their, their finisher was very simple. It's the um, atomic drop, and then the guy does a clothesline from the oh. front. He miss, he, they mess up their own friend. A guy does the atomic drop, and the guy goes behind him. And he decides to yell out while he's trying to do the clothesline the wrong way. Goes, oh, no, I went the wrong way. <laughs> 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 Live in front of a crowd. And we were just so I remember the promoter came to us because he was like, Oh, that's what we I'm sorry, like we have to see how good you are. We put against our worst tag team. I said, You almost lost two guys today, buddy. Cause I was wholeheartedly about to grab a steel chair and just start swinging. And everybody was in the back. Everybody in the back, like, they were laughing because, you know, I kept it in character. I was like, ha, ah, but I was like, no, nah, I'm really pissed, guys. Once I got to the back and they realized that was serious, they were like, it's them. And they they, they were so proud about the match. They was like, we look good. And I'm like, no, you don't. You look stupid. <laughs> <laughs> and they were like, they. I think they thought they were getting a title shot. And it was like, you guys can't even hit move. I was like, if they become title, if they become champions, I'll never come back here ever again. And they was like, no, no, they'll never be champions. They're just, I think they were friends with like the promoter or something. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. I ain't never going back there. Never been back since. Wow. 
That's wild. Okay. My last question for you. What's the biggest regret you've got in your wrestling career? Ooh. Oh, biggest one. That's a few, because I, I didn't miss out on a few opportunities. Um, probably, I could have had a match with TJP, but I definitely, I had gotten sick and couldn't do it. Because mm-hmm. I think, I forget, he was doing something at ACW, and they wanted, like, a, a three-way tag match with him, Nick, some other team, and me and Greg. Greg already didn't want to go. I was going to force him. But I was like, it's TJP, bro. Let's just kick him. And I've met a lot of celebrities. And TJ is one of the cool, like, he's, fun for all, he's very short. He's probably, Chaz, he's probably your height. A lot of these guys I'm learning are not as tall as I thought. Like, I met, um, I met Crime Time. And uh, they look nothing like they do on TV. JTG is as buff as Burley can be. I don't know if you've seen him. Like, just Google a picture of JTG and what he looks like now. He's extra buff. And then I found out, uh, rest in peace, Shad, but I am taller than him, which hurt my uh, childhood. You're taller than Shad? It's, he wears tall boots. He was wearing boots. That oh, increased wow. his height. He's actually 6'1". That hurt. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that doesn't make me feel nearly as bad. Because I was looking, I was like, bro, I looked at who was I standing next to you, and I was just, I was blown away. Oh, I was standing next to uh, Grim, who actually was just on AEW Dark um, a while ago. Mm-hmm. And I said this to Chaz, actually. Yeah, was, uh, this, was, this was actually just this past Sunday, so on the, yeah. <laughs> the 14th. And I said, um, I was like, dude, Grim is massive, but he's my height, which yep. really intimidates me because that just makes me think about how big Warload is. On that show. <laughs> I've seen Grimm numerous times, but uh, the funny part about Grimm is his voice to me. I think I've told this multiple times. I'm like, you're the big bad guy, but he's got such a friendly voice. He's a friendly dude. Yeah. Because I think, I think at the C3W show, the fun part about uh, the one we had the basketball, since my character is a basketball guy, I actually had a basketball. And we, the entire show, just stayed behind in the back and played basketball. And Grim plays exactly like a football player plays basketball. <laughs> but uh, Grim's a cool dude. Yes, really you nice guy. Get used to him. You just got to get used to him. He's one of those guys where he's strict. He 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 takes it very seriously as he should. Well, as as yeah, you're you're right. As you should. We yeah, we'll talk. We'll, we'll talk more off air. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know where we're going with that. <laughs> Go ahead, Josh. All righty. It's my turn. Ooh. See, they, they get upset when I when I say that. But anyway. We don't care first... about the questions. <laughs> Cliff, this is my turn, okay? Oh, he you had me. your turn. It's my turn. Look, okay. man, don't make me come to Middle River, Indiana, and beat your ass. <laughs> Um, so my first question is, um, how was your encounter with New Jack? Oh, he's fun. I'm, he's not, he's crazy to me, but I'm used to that type of crazy. <laughs> like, when I met him, um, he was, he was quiet, but he just had that, that vibe. Like, he has a serial killer vibe, I'll give him that. <laughs> like there's certain people I've met like I've met Scott Steiner Scott and Billy Gunn well Billy at first when you first see Billy Gunn in person he is actually 6'7 jacked horrifying and he's he's has a like when you first meet him he's very fuck off fuck off and I once you get to know him he's fun I think um I think, how did I get introduced to Billy? I think, oh, Bam is friends with, I don't know how the hell that happened, but Bam is friends with his son. And you know how loud Bam is? (laughs) Hey, this is my boy Tyler. And I'm like, who the hell? Billy. (laughs) And he's still jacked like that. But Scott is a whole different animal. Scott is Scott. (laughs) All righty. My next question for you. Would be what inspires you to be a wrestler? Like, who is like your inspiration? What inspires you to get out 
get out of your bed and be like, hey, I want to wrestle. John Cena. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I would expect that answer though. Like, uh, actually, definitely. for real, like, what made me first? I was doing it for fun with Justin, and then I was like, I found like who uh, Shibata was, and I was like, damn, God, I don't want to do stuff like that. I don't know how I ended up being a high flyer, but I definitely <laughs> just want to go up and just kick people. But I was like, damn, this looked fun. I think Cliff actually recently saw it, but I told him I was like, you know what? I want to do my finisher like Okada does. Yeah. <laughs> so like a lot of New Japan people made me think like this is something I could really I don't know why the New Japan style of just beat the shit out of them and don't make it pretty is just fun. No, knowing you that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. I, yeah. That, no, that that makes one hundred percent. You'll know why they're my favorite. Yeah. <laughs> makes, makes so much sense. Yeah. Makes so much sense. And then um, my last question for you would be, what advice would you give to up-and-coming wrestlers? Starting off, it's going to be tough. Ain't nothing tougher than starting off. A lot of people, um, before you start wrestling, have an idea of what you want to do. Because everybody's going to throw a suggestion at you, but don't let everybody's suggestions be your guy. Mm. Because a lot of people tell me, like, every time, oh, you'll never make it. They'll never take you seriously as a basketball player. You got to you gotta have wrestling gear and tights. And I'm like, you're match one, then I'm match seven. Shut up. <laughs> like, certain, like, if you know what you, if you know what you need to work on, just work on that. A lot of people, they want to turn you into what they think is perfect. But that's not what's perfect. That and... When they call you green, they're not meaning it as an insult. They're just informing you that you're young. Because mm. a lot of people, when they hear, oh, there goes the green guy, they think something bad, but that's just kind of like he's new. Mm. Hmm. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, it's now time for the 10 count questions. So, like I said, 10 questions. First thing that comes to your mind, this is about to either be super duper hilarious or a fucking train wreck. So, we will see how this goes. All right? Let's put the imaginary timer on the clock. Ding! You heard that? You heard that, right? You heard that? Timer. All right, here we go. And uh, Batman or Superman? Batman. Favorite cartoon? Uh, No Game, No Life. Yes. Uh, Favorite anime? Uh, My Hero. No, that's not even my favorite one. That's not even. Uh, kiss him, not me. What Ooh. pisses you off? Stupidity. <laughs> <laughs> Favorite movie? Uh, No Game, No Life. Uh, Justice League or The Avengers? Both. I don't, I've never seen either one. Last show you binge watch? Uh... Probably My Hero Academy. I have to ask because I know you. Anal or oral? Oral. Favorite cuss word? Bitch. (laughs) And last but not least, favorite opponent? Greg. All right, boom. This wasn't a train wreck. (laughs) We passed. I want you people to know I've just never seen superheroes. I know it's weird. Everybody says it's weird because I watch nothing but anime, but I I don't know anything about anything about superheroes. Uh, I've seen the people I hang around, they hate that because, you know, they're Marvel and DC. And I go, didn't Batman fight Hulk and Captain America in the movie? And they were like, no, those two never met. And I was like, oh, they all look alike to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well... I wanted to wish, uh, wanted to tell you, thank you for being on the show, man. Definitely appreciate it. No problem. Uh, we definitely uh, got to have you back on with Greg and uh, interview you guys as a tag team. Sure, we can do that. Yeah, yeah we definitely. Have to hang out a lot more than we should. <laughs> That's funny. So yeah, we definitely got to bring y'all back. So um, we got Tyler Moore here on the show. Time for us to sign off. My name's Chaz Evans here with the Red Dog, the Idol Master. 
and Napster here. We'll catch you guys on the next time of the Three Count Podcast. Now entering the ring. Be there or yeah, be somewhere else. Hey, guys. If you like this video, make sure you subscribe to our channel to get the best content from the Three Count. We're the best podcast out there. Don't let anyone tell you different. Make sure you follow us on Instagram at 3CountPod as well as on Twitter at 3Count underscore pod.